Hi guys, Crafty Crystal here. Today is part one of how to make a needle felted hat. Not wet felting, needle felted. This is the one that uh, I made to learn on. Uh, Karen Willoughby was my teacher. And I had an awful lot of fun making it. Really, really enjoyed myself. So I jumped right into this one while I was making the other one. So I could learn by my experience and by my mistakes and teach you about it. So part one today is about getting to this point on the hat. Part two will be uh, an adjustment on the bill, how to, how to adjust it, change it, whatever, and doing the color. Okay? So, uh, supplies. You're going to need a space about this big. Less than a hand towel's worth. You're going to need a hat form. Uh, these go from uh, small, medium, and large, and extra large. This one here is a 19 and a half inch uh, circumference. The one for my blue hat was a 22 inch circumference. This is for an average woman. This is for a teenager or a small headed woman. And then they have smaller ones that you can buy to make for children. Now, tools. There's your tools. That's all you're going to need for tools. A multi-tool and a single tool. I My personal preference is small points. I use a thin fabric to put mine together. I don't need the big, bulky, heavy-duty ones. And a small one for detailing and conquering small areas, small problems. Okay. Now, materials. You're going to, besides the form, which costs about $30 at Living Felt, you're going to need batting. Now, batting comes in big balls, and that's called M1 Core Wool. The same material, the exact same material, that comes in sheets is called M1 Batting. So if you have Core Wool, you have batting. If you have M1 Batting, you have Core Wool. Interchangeable. I would suggest uh, using batting instead of the core wool because it's easier to work with. You already have sheets. Now, for my, pers for my personal use, for my first hat and for this hat, I used uh, quilt batting. It's thin. It's very easy to work with. Uh, you just tear off the sheet you want and, and go for it. Um, take the, top, the height of your hat the height of your form and you just make a little mark where you want to tear it at and then you tear it. You do not cut it. All through this film you're going to see little notes that say cut, tear, don't cut. And that is because if you if you cut it and you're putting two or three layers on it you have to put down into your fabric you're going to have this, and it's going to be a solid line, and it's going to be a bump that you have to really, really work at to get rid of. If you tear it, and you have several thicknesses you have to work into your fabric, it'll disappear down into it, and you won't have a bump. Okay? So, big, 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 big thing to do tear your fabric into the size pieces you need. If you need a strip three inches wide, you measure out your three inches, mark it, and you just tear it. Just like that. No problem. Your tear is really simple. Um, for coloring on the next half, you're going to be using roving. I won't be using red. I have a couple blues I want to make. But roving is um, has is together, you might say, in uh, long lines, long strands, like that, and it, you can spread it out. It makes it real easy for adding the color to your hat. Okay, so that's all you need. You need hat form, batting, roving for the color and your tools. And that's it. That's it. That's all you need to start today. 
So um, get your tools together and uh, let's make a hat. Karen was nice enough to share with me two forms. I have a larger one and a small one. This is the one I'm using for what she's teaching me and what I learned, the do's and the don'ts and my mistakes. I'll pass on to you and I'm going to teach you on the smaller form. You're supposed to use batting, wool batting, and I don't have the regular wool batting that comes in big clumps like um, like core wool. What I have is some um, quilt batting, and it's pretty thin. It's less than a quarter inch for sure. And I took a very small sample. I made myself a little ball. Where are you, little ball? There you are. I made myself a little ball to determine what kind of thickness, how many layers of these I would need to get the thickness I wanted in my hat. Your hat should be between a quarter inch and three eighths. A quarter inch is more than enough, honest. These are this is this is um, a little tiny bit over a quarter inch. It looks pretty thick, and uh, using all my strength, I cannot tear it. In fact, this is what I made it on. You can see it did not even stretch it. See there? Um, yeah, I, I needed to find out that part of the technique and how many thicknesses of this I would need. And it turns out it needs six thicknesses of this. And then for the crown, I didn't have enough of this left over to do a whole crown. So what I did was, I have some, um, this is some core wool that Karen sent me. And this is my uh, quilt batting. So I'm going to, oh, I made that. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put one of these quilt battings on the outside, like this, and one on the inside, like this, to do the crown. Now, this is a lot smaller than the crown because it needs to mesh in with and be connected to the outside. So, I've got my parts. To, to work with and all I'm going to need is these are the whole tools I need a form, a single point and a multi point which reminds me I have to change two of these anyway um, that's my idea and I hope it works out because I would like to show you guys that someone else can use her process and see what kind of results we get. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have a ball with this because it's territory I've never entered before. So I have this quilt bat, uh, batting and in order to use it, you, uh, when you get it, if you order this stuff, you need to spit some water on it and then you need to put it in a dryer and let it fluff. Now I let you, Somebody said 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Um, I just put it in there while I was doing other stuff and let it sit, oh, 20 minutes, I guess. You can see it didn't hurt it any. Okay, so I'm going to take the part that's smoothest and not fluffy, and I'm going to put it that side on my form. I'm going to check out and see if I have how I am doing on length. Okay, now this is two rounds. And I think I'm going to stop it at two. Let me see if I have enough for three rounds all together on this. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm going to stop here at two rounds. On the outside. So I have two rows of this. Okay, 
Now, you're going to need a multi-tool. I have a seven multi-tool. Mine is all small. Most people use big, you know, the largest needles to start with. Because this is already low and thin, I'm using the short ones. And to start with, I have to go down into, down into towards my foam thing. But I'm going to do it very, very shallow. I want to do it about that much. Only like the first, the first tongue, the first two teeth. No farther than that. Because you don't want this embedded in your foam. You really don't. Okay. So I'm going to tack this in lightly. Once you have your thicknesses, you can go at a 15 degree angle like that. See how shallow that is? That's going through it. It's going to compact it, but it's not going to embed it into your form. Okay, so I've got that side on. Now I'm going to put two layers of the top on. I took this. my form on and cut around leaving edges to come out so it can fold down over the top. Now, for now I'm going to start on the bottom. I'm putting this down with this funny side, fuzzy side down. That'll be the inside but later I'm going to take one of these with the finished side and put it up this way on the inside so it'll have finished side on both directions. Okay, so you take it on there, make sure it's centered, and then you do the same thing. You want to kind of stick these together, and you want to tack them onto your sides, like that. There, that's good enough for now. I'm going to take my wrap. Before I go any farther, I want to bend this back. Like that. And I want to put this smooth side smooth side in right under there like that. Now if you're using the bulky kind of batting, you are not going to have to worry about having five or six layers that you have to deal with and try to make all come out even on the edge. What you will have instead is one big bulky batch, batch of stuff that you are needle felting into submission. <laughs> Now I, I will have all these layers uh, let's see I think I can back this this is a little weak here I think I'll just back this up a little bit so it'll come out thicker anybody else too thin you're too far up okay idea by tacking it first because as I'm going around it's just laying down on the table okay <laughs> replace that some crafts you can do while you're watching TV talking to other people that's fine as long as you don't ever take your your eyes off of what you're doing Because if you don't, you're going to end up felting your hand, or your fingers, or your thumb. And that's not fun at all. Okay, now what I'm doing, I'm just putting a light tension on it. I'm making sure it's lining up with my edge. Now here's my beginning, so that's one round.
actually my second round. And this makes uh, four layers. Five if you count this one. Okay, that's two layers. Okay. Now I'll tack this down. Remember, shallow tacks, you don't want to connect it to your core. I'm tacking it so it'll stay in place because when I put the next patch of crown on, I'm going to be pushing down this way to attach it, and that'll upset these guys and where they're positioned. So I need to tack them in first. So they stay where I put them. I'm picky that way. I want it to stay where I put it. Now, so I have four edges now. I have two on the crown. And I'm going to put another one of the uh, core. And I think I'll put this core on. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I've got it centered and I'm going to offset it a little bit that away. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to offset it a little bit this away. It's still going to go over the edge, but all the edges won't be together. See, this edge will be up here, this will be down here, this will be up here, this will be down here. In fact, I could cut some of that off. Down here, up here. Um, it'll, you'll get full coverage of the crown, but you won't have one single big bunch on the sides. There's some bunches I don't need quite that long on the side. Let's take a little off. Okay. Now I'll go back to what I was doing before. Should have thought of that before I got that far, but... It doesn't take much time just to rip it off and redo it. I remembered last night I was going to tell you guys about this. You don't end up with this really big, thick meeting of the crown and the sides. Hmm? I hope you guys get some of this quilt batting. It makes it so much easier. I can't imagine fighting those big, huge, fluffy globs of uh, fluff. It would be too hard to too much for me to want to mess with. I'm 75. I don't mess with anything I don't want to mess with. Okay. Now this is going to have much more um, gradient on the sides. Won't be so hard to get that flat. Now, I'm going to take this bottom and I'm going to roll it up like that. it up and tack it. Pull it up. Firmly now, not real loose. You want it nice and firm because you want a good rim. Pull it up. This didn't quite meet. I can undo it and stretch it out and make it meet better. But by the time I get all the rest of the stuff on here, it's not going to make a big difference. Okay, so. Got everything pretty much where I want it. Now I'm going to take the last one with the smooth side out and the fuzzy side in. And this time I'm going to remember to tack it <laughs> so it won't lay all over the table. There we go. Okay. Now I don't think I need this quite down all the way to the turn. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Got cat hair all over everything. Mm. 
cat hair is definitely going to be part of my finished hat. Okay, so now I can go and tack this in. I call it tacking because I'm not really felting at this point. I'm just getting it to agree to stick in place. It's agreeing with me. Yes, this is where I want it. Okay. Uh, hold on a minute. I seem to have somebody at the door. Okay. Now, the tacking part is done. I'm going to do a little bit of felting first because I want to take this off the form and put the inside in. Okay, now, because I didn't felt it down into the form, I can just pull it out like that. Look at there. Take the whole form, turn it inside out, put it back on your form here. Now, since I didn't do a, lot, a whole lot of felting on this, this is a little more iffy. Got to be a little more careful. You don't want it to fall apart. And then you take the more finished side up, like this. and tack it down in good. Now something, like I told you, yesterday I learned, I put it on here, I thought I was being so smart, wrapped it over the edge, tacked it all down in, really good over here, and when I took it off and turned it right side out, this was a big bump all the way around the inside. So I'm going to tack the middle down really well, and I'm not gonna tack the sides at all right now. I just want to get this really positioned where I want it. Again, I'm only going about that far in. Very lightly. I don't want it to become part of my form. And I'm not going slantwise yet. I want to get it straight down in where I want it. Slantwise is wonderful because you really get the get everything to interlock at a slant, interlock into each other instead of straight up and down, and you keep it from going into the form you're working with. But it will also move your fabric. And you don't really want that. Okay, now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you guys right now. And I'm just going to take this and lightly felt it at a slant until this is really firm. You just sit there and you just keep going. Now, I'm going at an angle lightly and see how much deeper it is than that? I've only just started and it's already compacting really nicely. I'm going to do this all the way around from the outside to the inside and then I'm going to go back and start from the inside to the outside like that. So, and I may even go sideways and then sideways like that. But when I get done, this is going to be very well compacted so I don't have to worry about it not being connected when it's on the inside and I'm doing the light felting in the, out there. Now I want you to look at the way this was added on. You can see that we don't have a smooth transition. You can see that we have a serious bump. Okay. These can be, re can be made part of the design or they can be changed. What I want to do is this. Now, I've done a pretty good job attacking this down, but as you can see, I can still remove it because it hasn't been fully felted into a fabric yet. So I'm taking this outside one down, and I'm coming over to the parts that are very 
much thicker. And I'm going to lift pieces of it up and tear them off. Just tear them off. Don't need them all. So we're going to get rid of some of them. We want a smoother transition between the cap and the side so we don't have this one big lump that we don't need. That's better. Let's get some of this. Anything that seems lumpy or bumpy, we'll just take it out. Now this part, I still have a lump situation going on here. So I'm going to convince some of it it ought to come off. I think I'll keep the upper layer and take some off the lower one. back on. Oh, well, while I'm at it, I might as well smooth this out a little bit. All I'm going to do with this, since it's just a very light thing and I haven't connected it yet, is just free the edges, the edges so that it doesn't uh, become a straight line. Just straight the edges a little bit. Now, I'm going to take this side I'm going to peel it back. Okay, now in here is a serious bump. Inside? More inside, but I think I can take care of it outside, too. No, that's definitely inside. Yeah, see here? I'll take some of this off on the inside. Take the rest off outside. You don't have to live with the problem. You just take care of it. You just remove it. So from now on, when you add, add a layer, you want to soften the edges. You don't want to bump. Your fingers will do most of the telling. Your eyes may see a bump, and your fingers will say, no, nope, there's no bump there. Okay. Now we'll just get this back on. Okay, now. I'm just going to lightly fray this, this edge here. It's going to get a lot of felting, so it'll most definitely disappear down into the fabric. So I don't have to like tear off pieces and really rough the edges. I'm just shredding them out a little bit so it'll be a soft line instead of a hard one on the top part. Just shred it out a little bit. We are going to be putting color on top of this, and that will take care of a lot of it. But if you have a distinct line, you're going to have to put a lot of color on it. And this stuff's a lot cheaper than the roving you're going to be putting on top.
You can get it to almost disappear with your hand. You can still see it, but not really feel it. Then, then you know it's going to disappear with the needles. Totally. Yeah, that's going to work good. Okay. So. Now see these uh, wrinkles I got on top? That's because I was so intent to get all of the inside done at one time. I forgot what effect it would be having on the outside. So when you're doing the crown, do some on the inside and put it back on and do some on the outside. Do that back and forth. And it will, uh, it'll help a lot. Now I have to figure out whether I want to keep that in and make it part of the design or whether I want to work it out. <laughs> See all the little pieces I got off? Okay, so now I'm just going to take and tack it. Tacking is where you're lightly sticking it on so it doesn't fall off while you're moving it around. And I'm not going in far, so I'm not connecting it to the form. I'm just kind of connecting it to itself. When I do this, I can see if there's any spots that's going to need shredding a little bit more. Like that. Go for any more bumps too. Okay, now it's just a matter of time. Time to get all this solid, get all this solid, and then you want to really work on your edge and get it to thin down. And I have mine sticking down farther than I need. I mean, than the form's made for. So I will pull it out like this. You get it tacked down pretty good. You can tell if you're getting into the form. See how that line disappeared? Okay, now we want you want to keep going until these are about that thick. When you look at them with a the ruler, they're a quarter inch or a little less. And that's going to take some felting. So, now see this here? If I want to take care of this, I'm going to go this way above it. Like that. And this way away from it. and down on it on both sides. And I'll just keep doing that until it disappears. Because this is very definitely not felted hard, which means I can do anything with it. I'll do that enough. This will totally disappear here and I'll have a smooth surface that I can start adding my color to. Now before we add color, we're going to put a brim on it. Um, I'll discuss with you how to figure out how to do your brim, how big you want it. Um, you can actually uh, form one and tack it and put it on and see what see if you like the the uh, look of it. Take it off, readjust it until you're happy with it, and then make it permanent. So I'll see you next time. I want to show you something else I learned. You learn by doing. This is the hat I'm doing with Karen. And you see this big bulge here? And you can really feel the bulge too. This is because all the crown pieces I put on were the same length. And they all met right along here where the edge is. See that? Now look what I did with it. No bulge. Nice and smooth and straight. And here's how I learned to do it. I've known for a long time that you can move the fibers underneath when you need to. Now if you take this, and I'm using it at an angle, and you take and you're pushing the fibers down like that. What I'm doing is I'm taking the fibers inside here, and I'm pushing them down out of the bolts and into the, the side. 
and you just keep doing that until you move all the ones from the bolts down onto the side. It's not going down into the core, just doing on the side. You need a very, very shallow, very, very shallow angle. And that bulge is disappearing, slowly but surely. You can still feel it here. This part is smoothed out. So I'm going to work on this portion here that's see where the bump is? See the shadow makes the bump? Just want to take that bump and I move, want to move it down into the wall. Like that. It is so cool what you can do with needle felting. I love it. I've got so much to learn. This is one thing that you have to learn by doing. I'm learning all little things that I shouldn't have done, and I'm loving it. I don't know about you, it looks to me like that bulge is disappearing. can't feel it anymore. Looky there. So I want to do that with the rest of my bulge and get rid of it. But I wanted to share that because there are so many things that you can do accidentally. See there? That you can get rid of. I've gone ahead a bit because I was just doing it away and talking to you and I didn't realize that you couldn't even see it in the camera. So, to have a better angle. I'm trying to do it from the top to the bottom, which is going to round my edge. If I wanted a, a, a pointed edge or a flat top, I would hold it all the way on the side and go directly down into the, the corner. Then I would hold it this way and I would go directly down into the corner and that would give me a very sharp edge. This particular one, I want to have a rounded edge. And I really would like to hold the darn thing so you can see it. I had like 20 minutes worth of tamping where I had it sitting up like this and you couldn't see a darn thing I was doing. Okay, now you're going to get these little bubbles, no matter how much you tamp. And I still haven't totally started felting it. I'm still tacking it. You're still going to get these little areas where you have bubbles that don't want to cooperate. Okay, a little bubble there, 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 like that. So you take your single tool, and you go in, you tell those little bubbles you want them to disappear. Just very lightly doing it. I'm doing it at an angle, too. And I'm telling them to go away. See the difference between that and that? The multi-tool gets it done a lot faster, but there's always going to be parts that just don't want to cooperate. And I call the single needle my enforcer. He goes back and tells him, you are minding no matter what. See there? This makes him lay down so pretty. All right. 
I'm going to go back on my multi again. Um, I've been doing this with my hand inside like this, which is why this was up where you couldn't see it. If you ever have a project or a part of a project where you have to have it close, your fingers close to hold something down, you put your fingers where you need them, you set the tool down on the, on the felt, and then you push. Set your tool down, and then you push. I can do it so that I can even feel it rubbing against my fingernails. And I don't have to worry about poking myself. You never do this when your fingers are down there. Never. But I could, like, if I had a spot, I really needed to hold down. Okay, I can hold this down here. Like that. Set my needle, push. Set my needle, push. Set, push. Set, push. You don't ever have to worry about poking into your hand. Because sometimes you just have to really control the felt where you want to put something. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to be doing this for a very long time. I've got all this bulge here to take care of and all this bulge all this bulge here to take care of and I want to felt my edge down so it's a lot flatter see how thick it is so you go ahead and do that it's going to take a while um, you probably won't continue this film till tomorrow the day after the day after don't know then I want to take and fold it turn it back on put it back in the form smooth out the top. It wrinkled when I did that, didn't it? The way I was doing it. It doesn't matter. It'll be unwrinkled when I get done with it. Because I'm just going to take and... I haven't... I have tamped down but not felted the top at all. When I get done felting, you won't see it. Okay? So, come back when you've got your inside all smooth. You don't have any of these lines showing. You don't have any lumps and bumps. The crown is nice and smooth. And then we'll put it back on the form and we'll work on the outside. Okay? All right. If you can see around my cat, remember the deep divot? You can see it in the shadow a little bit. Right there. <clears throat> All I'm doing is I'm shallow felt. I, this is less than half felted. And I've already got rid of most of it. You go right along the line and you felt away from it. Go along the other side and you felt away from it. Here's that big one. Felt away from it. Now, if we weren't able to get rid of this, there's several things we can do. If we got it all the way felted down and we still have a, a divot, this is like this because it's really felted hard on the in inside. Then what we can do is we can add a patch on it, fill in the hole, and then felt it down. We could also wait until we put the color on and make it a feature by the way we the way we fit the color, we can make it look like it's intentional. So anyway, you can see that it's, that deep line is almost totally gone now. So, felting is something that you can do almost anything with. If I had to, I could take and cut this whole top off and stick another one on there. I could um, cut it and add pieces to it and make it a top hat. I could cut it and add thinner ones to it and make it a slouch hat. There's so many things you can do. This is this is a very forgiving uh, medium, just like crochet is. You can experiment to your heart's content and have no trouble if you don't like it just taking it apart and doing something else with it. Okay? So anyway, that's, that shows you that it's, it's definitely going away. So you can do it good. And this is Chevy, my big cat. And he is the big cat. 
28 pounds to 22 to 23 inches long. Big boy. Yeah. He's also my crochet partner. He likes to sleep on anything I crochet. Okay. Be back. Okay, guys. This is the next part. Now you've got all your felting down, solid, feeling good. You have your edge pulled in so it's not too thick. Nice and firm. Got your crown done. Okay, now, before we go to color, we need to put on a bill. So, what do you think? <laughs> That'll be a nice little bill, kind of like a little paper boy bill. Just enough to shade your eyes. Okay. I'm leaving the front end done, uh, folded, because I don't need that. And I want to take the back end, everywhere that I've cut it. And remembering my lesson from before, I'm just going to tear the ends. You see, they're nice and thin and shredded. Fuzzy sides out. And I put this on with the fuzzy side in. And I'm going to tack it again. thinking briefly is I could go ahead and put this on the inside, but I really don't need to. It worked just fine on mine. I had my bill all finalized and I realized it was very weak around here and needed reinforcement. So. See, I have my firm on the outside. I have my firm here too. All the fuzzies are in between. Okay, now you are lightly tacked. Okay, I'm going to tack this down in better. I'm going to all thicknesses. I don't have to worry about it being uh, molded into the form because the form is not inside. I'm just getting this a good pushing down in there. Okay. Now I'll take the outside. I'll do the same thing. going to tack this together. Notice I'm not really messing with the outer edges. Okay. Now. I'm 
when I shine it, there's the one I shine it shredded. No, I want the reinforcement on the outside. Okay. So I'll put that in there. to these. I can't take too much off. So I'll put that point in there and put this out here. Now I have plenty extra for this part here to strengthen it up. Okay, my voice is very scratchy today. Don't know why. And it doesn't look like you need, just tear it out. extra thickness it needs. Yeah, I was surprised how thin that felt right next to the hat. It really did need the extra reinforcement. feel that it's nice and much thicker right there. Now, I made mine for my hat come down at a slight angle. And when you get to finalizing how hard this is, you can actually set the angle in there. Like, if you want it to come straight out like this, then you'll hold it like this. And you'll be jabbing down in that way. And it will tend to want to go out straight. If you want it more, uh, more slanted, you can do it like this. And it'll set that inner curve so it comes out more slanted. come out. Not like uh, okay, once more with feeling. I just want to kind of sneak up on it because it's harder to make it bigger again. I mean, it can be done, but it's not as easy. So I'm going for something like that. All right. You just figure out, if you want a wider bill, you'd make wider and you bring it back to here. If you want just a little decorative bill, you make a small one. Now, what I'm going to do here is, where's my good scissors again? Come out of here, baby. I'm going to go underneath. And I'm going to 
going to take out this. Because this can now fold under and give you a smoother edge. See? To be able to wrap that under. Doesn't matter that it's not perfect. You're going to make it perfect. Okay? I'll do the same on this side. So I have the full thickness for my bill. But I'm borrowing the outside. Okay. Now. Turn that under and tack it a little. Turn that under. And tack it a little. Okay, now. You tell the bill what you want it to be and what you want it to look like. Get quacky with me here, guy. Okay, I'm happy with the front. Now you realize all we're really doing is initializing and shaping. to the outside. Make sure I got my shape the way I want it. Okay. Don't put your hand under where you're sticking now. Give that a little tack. That isn't that bad. Looks okay to me. I can do any final touch-ups later. It's a lot of felting to be done yet, guys. A lot of felting. All we're doing is maneuvering where we want things to be. Okay, so you got your hat the way you want it. You got your bill pretty much the way you want it, except for little tweaks here and there. It's going to be thick enough. You want it especially a little bit thicker here where it adds. Okay, so now the rest of this is going to be felting, felting, felting. And I want to show you a trick. If you get packages of this and that, and they have different kind of, of uh, foam in it, I like this kind. It's kind of flexible. Get yourself a couple pieces and you hold it on the edge like this. 
See, after you filtered it down a bit like that, you want to perk the edge. Take your finger point and you can make it as trimmed as perfect as you want. A lot tighter. This is how you can tighten your edge. And kind of tweak the spots that you don't like. This part sticking out. Believe me, this is a great finger saver trick. Once you've got it pretty well tacked, I think I'm tacked down pretty good. I can feel, feel my thicknesses. Reasonably happy with my shape. I can go back and tweak it later, but okay. Now, just a matter of finalizing your bill. Finalize your bill on a flat piece like this. You can make your own by uh, I took a bunch of art craft felt and disconnected them. I just kept putting them together. I put four together and four together and four together and then connected all three of them so I'd have a surface to work with. So I can put it on this surface and work with it. It's a little flatter, a little easier to mess with. And it's firm enough, it's really hard for this stuff to go down in it. So this is what you'll be doing. Just little pecks at it. You just keep pecking at it on the outside and then on the inside and then on the outside until it's as firm and strong as the rest of your hat. So that's your next step. You just keep felting it together. All these little lines will disappear. They aren't heavy lines. The connections will disappear. You won't see them anymore. If you've got a spot where you decide you need more of a bump or less of a bump, you either push it in or add a piece on. Okay. There we go. Okay, I finished firming up my bill and the connection inside. Went back and rechecked the outside. Rechecked my rim. Rechecked the crown on the inside and the out. If you can go like this, and you don't get any fuzz, and if you can go like this and you can't pick anything up, you already made material. So I'm happy with this. Try to get it in the shape, finished shape you're going to want. Just keep putting it on, looking at yourself in the mirror, and deciding what you want to do with it. Okay, and then we'll put the color on, and we're going to have some fun with that too. Bye guys, and I'll see you on the next on part two.